Hey there, Mission Control. Well, we have an absolutely beautiful day and yes. uh, we need to get some work done in the garden, right? Yes. What do we need to do? Problem with me doing this stuff is unless it's like this, where it clearly, that needs to go. I don't know what the right thing is to pull. I know we gotta save as much dirt as we can. We need to clean out all these beds. Some of them still have some stuff growing in them. Like Yeah, we had like carrots, right? Uh, carrots, and there's even some beets, and then kale came back, and some cabbage came back. So we're definitely not gonna touch those because they're, um, they can withstand the they're weather hardened, here. Yeah. Hardened <laughs> stuff, so we'll see how they do this year. Yeah. So we've got what? We have 12 beds, one, two, three. Four, eight, 12, yes, 12 beds that we get to go through and clean out and uh, get ready. I actually planted, you didn't know it, but I actually planted some grapes up in our oh, you did? grape bed. I haven't built the uh, trellis yet, but you know, I got the post up there. So uh, all I got to do is- Mr. Martian, this is when husbands should always talk to their wives first. Cause I already- That was the grape bed. I already garden planned. <laughs> That was the garden that bed. <laughs> the, the, those are the grape beds though. That's what they're for. Hot. Oh, in trouble. Mm -hmm. All right, so we gotta we gotta pull weeds, huh? All right, let's do it. Save all that dirt. Dirt's so important, you know. When we first got started, it was like, oh, all you gotta do is put stuff in the ground. Yeah, not. Nah, you gotta you gotta really know what you're doing. And dirt is so important. Having good quality dirt, good drainage underneath of it. I don't know, that looks like something that you eat. This is clearly grass. Some of this stuff looks like it is. Wow, that's a lot of grass. That's a big chunk of grass. How in the world did that get so rooted in there? All grass. I wish that would happen out in the pasture. All right, these are, see, I don't know. At this point, I gotta stop because those look like they're in a line and they look good. So I'm gonna stop there and get instructions. Are these like good? These look like things that are supposed to be here. And are those good? Like, does those just need to be thinned? Is that broccoli? So if we just trimmed it all oh, back, so that's gotta go. Yeah. That big is things of grass. Spinach, and it looks like it might be, some of it's coming out. Coming back. Well. So it just needs a good trimming. Okay, different plan. So you want me to pull all this? Yeah, but leave that one. Leave that, that one. Really good. Oh, really? Okay. This bed looks like it needs more than a Jeffism. It needs an exorcism. <laughs> like in the new shop, we can hear the radio out here. That's kind of oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, we got Great. melons, but we, they were small and they didn't ripen. Well, we have lava rock down at the bottom. These are our old grow beds. For everybody new to the channel, these are the grow beds that we built and have one. Go back, check out the have one playlist, and you can watch all the stuff we did there. So these are all recovered grow beds. So these little, these aren't just raised beds. These are actual kind of designed beds for growing food. The bottoms of them, they're, they're all lined with plastic, so they retain water really well. There is a drain on it, so it doesn't just hold water, it, it just controls it. And then uh, the first layer inside of them is lava rock. And that lava rock is there for a few reasons. One, for good drainage, um, but two, also it's a great place for the bacteria to grow that make for uh, healthier plants. That's kind of one of the things we learned when we did the uh, have one stuff is the importance of good bacteria in your soil. So they got a nice happy place to live. And then on top of that, we have uh, just our local dirt, which is kind of a clay, clay, it's got something else in it. I don't, uh, loamy, I guess loamy is the way to say it, uh, kind of stuff. It's not the greatest dirt on the planet. It's fertile, but it doesn't drain very well. It turns into like mud. So we got that on top of the rock and then underneath, or on top of that, we have, this is actual potting soil, right? You guys probably didn't hear that, but it's a ready to grow mix from a local company. Um, so that's all on top. And this year we got a little bit more dirt coming. And then we've got our own compost piles, but they're not aged enough yet. You can't use fresh compost. You know, it's got to be uh, aged. Otherwise it has too much nitrogen in it and it'll burn your plants. So you got to let it sit there and age. You got to rotate it. Uh, stir it, if you will, mix it so that it, all the big clumps of poo break down and whatever else you've thrown in there decomposes. And then we also have the digester, which we haven't really used yet to help anything because we got the loading problem. So we got to fix that. If we get the digester going, we could actually use the digest state as a, fertil a natural fertilizer. It's all organic. We wouldn't have to buy anything. And then we'd just be recycling everything. So we'd have to do our initial load and then just be very very aware of everything. So we don't want to 
throw food scraps or anything away. We want it all to go into the, the digester. Yeah, I just got to get that loading problem all figured out with my abundant time availability. All right, that's starting to look like a good grow bit there. Yeah. All this stuff right here is new. Oh, wow. It's new growth. Man, so that'd be I great. all this went bad, but... If we don't have to replant kale every year, that'd be awesome. Like, have really solid kale. Critters are going to be happy when we give them that stuff. Yeah. Taking all the dead stuff off so all the growth um, and nutrients can go to the new stuff. You know, you're kind of doing the Michael Jackson thing there without one glove on. <laughs> One of the things we've been talking about, because as you guys know, we've left our job and we're doing this full time. In fact, in, a, in about a month, we'll be away from full time work for exactly a year on May 16th. So uh, we've been spending a lot of time, given everything going on, trying to figure out, you know, our revenue streams and what we're going to do. And YouTube is, of course, going to remain a major part of that. And one of the things we've been doing is Patreon. Uh, and there's many of you supporting us over there. And we really are thankful for that. But um, time availability being what it is very low and the fact that people are giving money on patreon and i feel like we haven't been doing right by the patrons we haven't really been spending a, enough time on them and it, it's a whole nother platform right yeah. i mean so not only would be you have to do youtube videos but then you'd be doing patreon work and um so we're not really doing right by the patrons and we want to fix that so mm -hmm. why don't you tell us what you've been researching and and, and what you think we're considering doing so um, we were considering doing YouTube membership versus Patreon, and we decided in the long run, um, after doing some research, that YouTube membership might be a little bit better. Um, so the exciting thing is, is we get to offer our members things like behind the scenes videos, and um, maybe even extra videos, and live videos, and um, we hope to offer our members um, quite a bit. Yeah, so one of the things we were talking about, you know, as we've gone through this process, uh, I'm reminded of my grandpa telling me about the Great Depression and money and how important it is to really appreciate what you have, which everyone should do, of course. But uh, when we've been living in abundance for a while, you really start to take things for granted. So like lately, we've been canceling our insurance and canceling our, our TV. No and, more Food Network. Yeah, yeah, no more uh, superhero <laughs> shows for me. Uh, so uh, we're like, well, what are we going to be doing for entertainment? Because we think it's important at, at the end of the night to spend some time with each other and, you know, sharing something. And reading is great, but you're kind of like, eh, you know, kind of your own thing. It's not really interactive. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we were thinking of, well, how can we create something for our, our members if we launch this YouTube membership uh, and, and create something that would be exciting for them and maybe kill a few birds with one stone? And we were thinking, like, I've been going back through, I don't know if you've noticed, but the thumbnails on the channel, I've really spent a lot of time trying to update all the thumbnails. And it's interesting going back in time and seeing how horrible of a job I did <laughs> when we first started. I was just letting YouTube figure it out because I didn't have enough time. But uh, now, and, and it wasn't our main revenue source, but now that we're actually trying to really make a go of YouTube, it's like, I better take this seriously. So I've been going back over all these uh, thumbnails and I started realizing we have almost 400 videos that we've posted wow. and some of them are really funny. <laughs> and I look like an idiot in most of them. <laughs> so I was thinking, wouldn't it be entertaining? Uh, and we were talking about it. If, if we did for our members, we'll do a watch party where Mrs. Martian and I go back and we start on the very first video and kind of give you our emotions and our feelings and what was happening at the time and what we were experiencing that we didn't capture on on the video but kind of everything that goes into it so we'll we'll do a video like every night where we're doing a watch party this is the idea anyway and uh, we'll record that and put that up for our members to see uh, as a way to really give you the experience so it's not just so much hey here's the stuff that we're doing but you're really understanding the emotions and the trials and tribulations and things that we uh, don't spend a lot of time talking about. So tell us what you think about that uh, down in the comments below, you know, and if people are really excited about that, then I think we're really seriously considering letting Patreon stay there, um, but letting our patrons and everybody know, you know, we're going to move over and we're really going to give members and people who are giving money to us some real value. Because yeah, we so appreciate your support and we want to do anything that we can. And also, if you have any ideas, if you want to become a member and have anything that you'd like to see, please let us know. We'd love to hear it.
Yeah, I know the members get, when you sign up, uh, we're gonna try to do more live streams. So members, you know, show up in the live stream more. Uh, clearly you get a little icon and more money that you contribute as a member. Uh, the higher up you show up in the, the chats so we can answer your questions more frequently. Uh, and also, I think there's another thing. Um, yeah, the behind the scenes uh, and doing videos, uh, live streaming for you guys. So that's what we're considering doing. So uh, be sure to check that out. Yeah. I guess we got to get back to work. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. You got what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven done. That's freaking awesome. There's still more to go, but feels good to get some of it done. And it's cool to see it all thinned out. So we do have some kale, we have some little baby carrots growing, and then we also have a whole half bed of kale. And grapes. Well, nice job, honey. This looks really good. Thank you. We're spending a lot of time on the garden this year because uh, when you have no real income, like getting food is pretty darn important and being able to grow your own food, especially in these times that we live in, is really super duper important. And it's a good feeling knowing when you can grow your own food and you don't depend on everybody else to give it yeah. to you. So, and I know you like it because you come out here, she's a foodie. And if you don't know that, you got to go over to a blog, theblossomingtable.com and see everything she does because she is an amazing chef. And you like to come out here and what, just pick stuff and then go inside and make something out it of it. It doesn't get fresher than that. It's really fun. Yeah. So that's pretty yeah. cool. So be sure to check out her, uh, her blog so you can see more. But we're learning a lot this year too. We have to learn a lot about canning. Yeah, food uh, preservation. Yeah, so a lot of this stuff is new. Yeah, big deal. Yeah. Yeah, we're trying to figure out how to put a root cellar in, but it's not an easy thing to do. But that's like the ultimate yeah, food preservation cool. thing so that you can keep stuff uh, just the right temperature and humidity, whether it's hot or cold outside. So we'll have to figure that out. Yeah. But Nice job, honey. Thank you. And you guys, for yep, thanks for following along. Really appreciate everything. Uh, don't forget you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram to see some more of the up-to-date and behind-the-scenes stuff. Uh, let us know about membership. What do you guys think about that? Leave your comments down below, and uh, I think that's about it. I got to yeah. get back to my work, and I know you got more stuff to do, so thanks everyone for following along. This is Mr. and Mrs. Martian, out. Bye.